Alright. We're at the bench for the first time. Got some fun things to go over today. I'm just gonna, I don't know if there's a theme yet to these, but I'd like to show you some of the things that I, I do soldering wise so that you can do them yourself and save yourself some money. I don't think I'm giving away any secrets here. It's just some some methods of ways you can do things. Um, I happen to have a lefty guard today that I've been working on. It's rare when you get a lefty guard hit the table, but kind of fun because you got to work on it a little bit in reverse from what you're used to doing. Uh, of course, it would be played like this, so you got to keep in mind with your switches, uh, you know, make sure not to wire them backwards. Um, this one's going to have some splits. I pre-cut these, pre-installed the humbuckers here with a loose measurement of these leads. I got to strip those and maybe do another zip tie or two. We're going to be running to our splits here. We're going to be running red to the switch and running uh, green and uh, the shield to our grounds. So we just kind of, I always try to make room with enough lead to get to split open and go both ways here and here. Um, waiting on the right value tone pots to come in. I just ran out. So no tone pot wiring today, but let's talk about opal switch wiring and this jack. And um, hopefully this will be helpful for the people who are maybe buying these or want to wire one themselves. Uh, there's no magic to it. It's just a, I've kind of tried to streamline it. So, I was trying to install this in the guitar and realized this is a lefty guitar. So, you're not going to get the wires going this way. Uh, you need them going the other way. So, we have to make one uh, reverse of how I'm used to doing it. So, here's the process. something assembled here uh, now the next job probably if you're just getting into soldering making your own stuff probably really annoyed by uh, having to cut and strip wires all the time I'm gonna give them you know, somebody 10 inch leads to work with I guess somebody is me in this case I'm working on this guitar so get our strippers love these things they're awesome green leaves really solid uh these this is a weird wire gauge normally you'd strip here but i think i use these because it's a smaller inner diameter so i'll give it basically a little more than the distance across the two grounds the first thing i'm doing is my ground this wire happens to be pre-tend so that's cool and when i bend it you don't want to bend right at the edge because that'll that'll kind of be weak so I'm going to take my finger and go just past where, you know, here's where the wire becomes exposed. I'm going to go a couple millimeters beyond that, use my fingernail, and help with the bend. And this is going to ensure that your wire is not going to break or become weak at that point. Uh, so hang on, i got to think about which direction we're going. Okay, yeah, so it's going to be a strat, be a lefty strat. He'll play it like this. The jack plate will be here. All right. I really had to... <laughs> That's funny. Okay. And the jack plate's feeding wires this way. So we're doing it backwards. And I'm going to come in. And I like to secure it by going there. And then you also want to be sure that your insulation isn't going to get melted. I don't have Teflon wire here, so I have to be mindful of that give it a little gap and correct if we need to but something like that should make for really nice all right so let's get to the actual soldering real quick normally I like to assemble my wires ahead of time try to get as many as I can but in this instance um, I'm just gonna show you what I'm doing
All right, guys, so rather than um, hide a little, you know, error of mine, it's not really an error, but this is too much solder on here. I used a little much. I like to use these thick gauge, is, uh, thick gauges of solder for soldering jacks, and sometimes you get a little overzealous, and you end up getting something that just kind of runs down. But I inspected it, and rather than fix it and try to make it perfect for the internet, um, it's a solid joint beyond solid there's just a lot of solder at the bottom so uh, i'm ruling that a an acceptable grade it's not my best work but you know the other joint looks nice and i had to sit there and hold that insulation back so it hardened in a way that doesn't come undone all right So once we've done all that nonsense, I'm gonna get our zip tie out. I just like to use one, sometimes two, if I'm packing it and sending it somewhere. And uh, the cool thing is to try to layer the wires, you know, according to some organization system. So I'll always try to get them lined up. I don't know if you can see. This one just a hair. There we go. Look at that. Give this a snip. And voila. Um, that's a pre wired jack. I've now made that for myself for. Um, Oh shit, I used the wrong color code, but... I got these backwards. But, I know what I'm doing on the other end, so not an issue. Alright, so I... I got us a jack that I didn't mess up the, the color code on. That was that was funny. So um, we're just going to talk about this oval switch where you put a buffer in the chain. I have a um, spud 2 buffer with some short leads here for demonstration purposes. And what I want to show people is how I connect the volume, the oval bypass switch, and the buffer. Five ways involved there too. But this is kind of the the crucial thing in understanding the signal flow. We're going to isolate from the jack um, the ring of the TRS thing and the tip of the TRS, which is blue and yellow. Um, we're going to take those two wires and we're also going to take the white, which is the hot of the output. And we're going to look at those. These, this is a ground, this is a ground to the negative battery, which uh, the negative terminal of the battery, you know, it helps complete the circuit for plugging a switch in here and turning your buffer on. So we're talking about just the oval part right here. Oval with a buffer. Take these three wires. And uh, let's look at how these correspond here. So blue, I just kind of use as a send color. Waldo uses it as, a, as an in on his buffers. So... You're gonna use 
you know, blue if you want, if it helps you visualize a blue output from your switch directly into the buffer. So in this case, we could, if our switch output was uh, wherever it may be, I think it's here. Um, we'd put the blue here. And from there, it's going straight into the buffer. So the signal is now protected. Uh, from the buffer, we're gonna pick one side of our, um, our oval bypass switch, which is right here. We already have decided that this is the bypass side. So we're gonna feed the signal in here. So it's either gonna go here, or it's either gonna go here, which will connect it to here. So on the buffer, we're not even looking at battery right now, and we're not looking at ground, because those are just gonna be grounded and sent to the battery. Now I'm missing a wire here for the, the full demonstration, but you need to get the other side of this opal bypass switch right here. You need to get that to your volume. And from your volume, you're gonna take your pre-wired opal jack or whatever you've set up for yourself, and you're gonna connect white. So there'll be a white wire from here to the other side of that opal jack, and you'll go white straight to your output. And what's that, let's follow the signal. It comes from your pickups, goes into your switch, goes out of your switch, into the buffer, goes out of the buffer, into this side. So now what's it doing? What if we have the switch not set to where it's sending the signal to here, to here, to the invisible white wire, to the white of your output, and now to your amp? Um, so it's, it's passing through the volume pot. What if we didn't do anything here. Well, there's nowhere for the signal to go, so when the switch was selected to those terminals, it's it's going to kill the signal. Um, what if we incorporate our oval system? So the reason I use yellow for the send for oval, even though I didn't in this earlier soldering video because I screwed up, is because it matches like this. So in this case, um, I know I said I like to use blue as a send color, but blue ends up being a return here. Um, but your yellow goes to yellow, sends to your effects, your pedal board right here, when you have this side of the switch selected. And then it returns from your pedal board via blue, will go into the white wire that you've used, or whatever color, on, on this terminal here, go into your volume pot, through your volume pot, out your volume pot via the white wire of the pre-wire jack. So there we go. There was my unique opportunity to show you how to integrate a buffer pre-volume knob with, a, with an oval system on a lefty strap. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of questions that come up. There's going to be so much more information to share, but um, I just needed to have a low you know, a low pressure video to, to start, just to demonstrate some basic things. Um, I'd love to get better at this, get better at explaining things. I've seen, I've looked at the schematic so many times, so many times, uh, that it's just kinda, most of it's in my memory, even though I still clearly get things wrong sometimes. But anyway, hope that was helpful.